Choose you. So many decisions that you have to make. Confusing, overwhelming, scared you'll make a mistake. Second guessing yourself, trying to see what to do. Whatever you decide, be sure to choose you. Life is to be lived, lessons to be learned. Give yourself a little credit. Collect what you've earned. Empower yourself. Take a mental break too. Wherever you go, be sure to choose you. You matter. You're worth it. What I say is true. In the end, you're gonna win. But you got to choose you. So today's show was um, one that was well thought out, but I had a couple little issues to come up, but we are here now. <laughs> We're here now, and I'm so glad to have you with me. Today's topic is love. Okay. So love is an intense feeling or deep affection a great interest or pleasure in doing something, a person or thing that one loves, a feeling of deep affection for another, or to like or enjoy something very much. Well, you know the basics of love. You do, your heart beats faster, gives a little flutter. You can't control how you feel, what you say, the whole night. But what we're going to discuss are love languages. Because a lot of people don't know their love languages. I had a conversation with my daughter. And I was explaining to her that her love language was affirmation. And she was like, no, I think I want people to buy me stuff. Okay, of course. Who doesn't want people to buy them things? But it's affirmation. I'm your mom. I know it. Okay. What are the five love languages? People who usually have one primary love language or the thing that makes them feel most special most of the time. And many people have you know, one or two secondary love languages that are less intense, but they're still very aware of. Okay, words of affirmation. Appreciate compliments, encouragement, or supportive words. Is your love language words of affirmation? When your partner says things like, I appreciate how much effort you put into planning this trip for us or you look adorable today or I love how compassionate you are you know you like the goodies but we all do and there's nothing wrong with that the communication takes a downfall when your partner gives you insincere or disinterested compliments Assume that they know they, that you love, they love you, appreciate you, or are attracted to you without showing it. Nice shoes. Duh. Of course, if they weren't nice, I wouldn't have bought them. So, is your love language word to affirmation? Or is it quality time? You feel love when someone sets aside time and give you their undivided attention. Hmm. And the person you with silences their phone during meals or important conversations and engages in all the activities that you two enjoy together just to spend more time alone. Or does your partner leave the room to watch TV or movie instead of sitting in there with you? Hmm. Receiving gifts is a third one. 
you feel most loved when someone is thoughtful enough to gift you something, whether it's big or small. You just like them giving it to you. So not just on like your birthday or Valentine's Day, but on any random day, somebody could walk up and give you a rose or or a teddy bear and you just elated. The miss is when someone grabs a last minute gift with no thought into it and just give you stuff. Well, not just give you stuff, but don't even realize that that's your, your niche, that that's what you like. A lot of times we take for granted that people understand our love languages and they don't. So, I mean, you may need to take a little time out with your loved ones to let them know what your love language is. Acts of service. You feel love when someone offers to help you with something that they know you need help with or takes things off your hand or your plate out of general kindness. You know, your partner know you had a, you had a long week at the office, so they offer to wash the dishes to take out the garbage. They'll go walk the dog without you asking. Or they know you tired and you just want to take a shower before you lay down and you end up getting your clothes together for your night clothes together to lay down and they start the shower for you. Those are acts of service. Number five is physical touch. Cuddles, kisses, hugs, and all that touchy-feely stuff make you happy. I've never been one to think that that was my love language. But during this COVID season, it's so funny to think that even the fist bump, the head nods, the chin ups, the peace signs, all of that is important. So I really think that that may be my personal love sign, the physical touch. Because, you know, we wear gloves, so we're good at work. We wear gloves, so I love to walk past and fist bump or head up. And the youngers, the younger people who work with me, the younger associates, for some reason, they think I'm funny. I don't know why. I don't tell jokes. But when they see me coming, everybody just breaks out into the biggest giggle. No matter what I'm saying, I get a laugh first. But it's okay. Because they makes it love me. But... You starting in your day with the kiss. You get a random hug for no particular reason. Your partner holds your hand, rubs your neck while you watch TV. And you dig that. That's your love language. If your partner pulls away from your affection, doesn't seem interested, even though they, they know you are. Hmm. You might need to look into that. Because that's... They're not speaking your language. And whether we say it or not, whether we believe it or not, love language, your love language is a big deal. What you do to uphold your love language is a massive situation in any relationship because it's a two-way street. If you're going down a one-way road and just doing what you want, what they want you to do and not getting anything in return. That's not a, a upbuilding for a relationship. That's not building. That's not stable. 
That's not a good thing. You're railroading yourself into a broken relationship. And one thing nobody needs, it's a broken relationship. You want to be in a balanced relationship. You know, I've gotten advice for several of my elders growing up. And it was really crazy early on because I didn't understand. I didn't know what they were talking about. I didn't take them serious because they were just funny to me. Because they always had so much to say. And one lady did explain to me that even though you may tell someone you love them, you ain't really love nobody like your mama. Until you get to the point where you got to decide, do I rather deal with this person or my mama? Then that's when you know you're really in love. But as long as your mama in the fore running, that ain't love. I was like, wow, whatever. You know, I've heard the, have you, you know, when y'all broke up, did you cry for three days? I cried for three days when me and such and such broke up. I said, cry for three days? Oh, no, I didn't cry at all. Hmm. You know, it sort of made me think I was a bad person. I was like, hmm. And even in marriage, I've been married before. And even in marriage. And divorce. <laughs> and I'm not speaking there for anyone. I'm telling anybody that's good advice to do. Um, I wish I had married for life. I wish I had married the person that was going to love me for life that I would be able to be married for forever. But because I did it, <laughs> because I was, I am able to move on and um, keep living and learning and loving. I took, you know, I, you know, you hear, I listen to a lot of elders I've had. Um, and when I say elders, I mean anybody older than me or more experienced than me in a certain situation, not necessarily age-wise, but if they got more experience, then they're my elder in a given situation. And the lady said, when you signed your divorce papers, did you cry all night long? No, ma'am. Did you have a fit? Did you beg them to come back? No, ma'am. Did you? No, ma'am. I start feeling bad. I'm like, what am I doing? Did I do something wrong? Am I that cold hearted? Am I that bad? What's wrong with me that I wasn't broke down after the fact? Mind you, this is stuff that in the past, but I'm like, because of what other people were telling me, I was beginning to second guess what I was feeling. And I was like, uh, I don't know. Am I wrong? Did I love wrong? Did I do something wrong? Why are you feeling like they want me to feel? Why are you feeling like the other people felt when they went through the hardship or the heartbreak or the whatever. Because it wasn't for me. And then, I'm like, but mm, I love my mama. Mm, and I love God. I, love, I even love his children. I, you know, I was just like, what am I doing wrong that everybody's bashing me about this one situation? And then it was like, um, uh, the realization came to me. If you love God, you're doing what you're supposed to do. That's it. 
You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. But if you love God, that's the start. That's the start. <laughs> that is the start. Even 1 John 4.19 says we love him because he first loved us. It's God's nature to love. Love and human nature has been ruined by the wiles of life. See, I was just telling you about that. But when people are born again by the work of God, they learn to love as God loves. The character of God's love is, it is seen in the act of him giving his only begotten son. We are all worthy of death. But Jesus died to bear that judgment of sin on our behalf. Now we can have life and live it more abundantly. People can't see God, but they can see that he lives within us when we practice his love. This is most clearly when seen when those to those who are not deserving. It ain't going to always be the ones that's just like you that need love too. Ah, that was a good one then. You know, it's not going to be the ones that's just like you that need love to. It's going to be those ones that's hard to love that you got to love on a little bit more. Do you have an increased confidence in God through your inward possession of the Holy Spirit to outwardly acknowledge Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Savior of the world? We know that we live in God and God lives in us. This relationship with God, who is love, Enables them to practice love towards people. You got to show it. You can't just talk about it. You got to be about it. You got to walk. Can you walk that walk and talk that talk? When people truly love God, they will love one another. But if they hate one another, you can't say you love God if you hate anybody. John repeats that people must believe in Jesus as the son in order to be saved. And that love is inseparable from the love of God's people. Those who love God will also obey his commandments commandments in spirit and in joy of willingness because they want to do what pleases God. They find strength to be obedient through their faith in Jesus as the Son of God because Jesus overcame the world's evils the children of God who trusted Jesus can also triumph. You can do this with ease if you love yourself. It's not hard to love everybody else if you love yourself. And think about it because in the end, you're going to win, but you got to choose you. You can't love you if you don't choose you. Choose you. Choose you. So many decisions that you have to make. Confusing, overwhelming, scared you'll make a mistake. Second guessing yourself, trying to see what to do. Whatever you decide, be sure to choose you. Life is to be lived, lessons to be learned. Give yourself a little credit, collect what you've earned. Empower yourself, take a mental break too. Wherever you go, be sure to choose you. You matter. You're worth it. What I say is true. In the end, you're going to win, but you got to choose you. Man's Child is an organization dedicated to the enlightening of girls from ages 7 to 17 in handling issues with anger, aggression, and bullying. Our mission is to infiltrate schools, churches, and communities with the message of anti-bullying and create awareness about the lasting effects of aggression and bullying. If you are interested or you know a girl from ages 7 to 17 that may be interested and benefit from this program, please contact us at www.sandschild.org. Again, that's www.sandschild.org. Org. DP Enterprises, the home of Fix It Dell. Do you need help finding a job or assistance with online production? 
Do you want a song written? Are you in need of private security? Would you like some personalized poetry? Or even a 501c3 created? If so, call Fix-It Dell at 901-440-0335.